In this video, we are going to be talking about N-acetylcysteine, or NAC, oxidative stress, and a COVID-19 potential treatment. Before we get too deep into it, I'd like to take a step back and look at what is oxidative stress. And in all of our cells, we are performing oxidations and reductions all the time in order to keep us alive. All of our cells have things called mitochondria. Their job is to take sugar and oxygen and convert this into carbon dioxide and ATP, which is a usable form of this energy. The issue is that when you have confounding variables such as pre-existing health conditions like hypertension or the coronavirus present, we can begin to disrupt the balance of oxidative species present inside of our cells. And this is believed to be the cause of some of the issues resulting in symptoms such as the acute respiratory distress syndrome or cytokine release syndrome. And so what I've drawn up top here is the reaction events that are occurring in which we are taking oxygen, the stuff that we would breathe in from the air right now, and what's happening is we are reducing it as we are adding electrons onto this oxygen molecule, what is it turning into? And so when we add one oxygen or one electron onto our oxygen O2 molecule, we end up with a reactive oxygen species. These are called ROS. These are very reactive because they have a lone electron and electrons don't like to be alone. They want to be in pairs. And so these reactive oxygen species will go and whatever else has an electron, they're probably going to steal it from it. And so this can be stuff like DNA or other very important biomolecules inside of your cells. And this is the reason why reactive oxygen species are generally not stuff that you want to have in high concentrations inside of your cells. And so the important thing to take note of here is that your body has a balance and there's a concentration of free radicals that you're supposed to have inside of you. And so what happens next is when you have oxygen as a free radical, an additional electron is going to be put onto it. It's going to form hydrogen peroxide or H2O2. An additional electron will be added onto this and hydrogen peroxide is said to be reduced into a hydroxy group or a hydroxide group. And then a final electron puts this into the form of water. Now, a key part of this reaction that I want us to focus on is the conversion or the reduction of hydrogen peroxide into water, because this is a place where N-acetylcysteine might be able to help us out quite a bit. And so specifically what is happening in this reaction is that we are taking our hydrogen peroxides or H2O2, we are combining it with two molecules that we refer to as glutathione or GSH, and we are using this in order to create the water. So we are reducing our hydrogen peroxide into water. And then in addition to that, we are creating these disulfide bonds in our glutathions. So this 2GSH, the SH, which is this thiol part right here, which is the SH bond, is being converted into an SS bond. So what this eventually turns into is a GSSG. And in this disulfide bond, we now have fewer electrons present because the electrons went into this water molecule right here. And so the take home message from this reaction is that we need this glutathione, this, or glutathione, this GSH, we need this present in order to convert hydrogen peroxide into water inside of your cells. And so this is a very critical step in order to prevent you from having buildup of react reactive oxygen species inside of your cells. And so the issue is that as I've drawn this reaction on the bottom here, as shown, it is currently a one-way direction. So while it's great that we are reducing our hydrogen peroxide and creating water, the issue is that we don't have any more GSH present. So how do we get our GSH back so that we can continue to reduce the amounts of these oxygen radicals that are present in our cells? And so that is where NAC comes into play. If we look at the this what we have now, our products of our reaction, is that we're able to react this with a in a metabolic form of NAC. So I'll just write this very simply, and this is at a high level. We're able to use N-acetylcysteine in order to oxidize the glutathione back. We're going to change these disulfide bonds back into GSH. And so what we get out of this is more GSH present inside of our cells. And the reason why it's very important for us to have GSH present inside of our cells is to reduce the concentrations of these reactive oxygen species that we have present because when we have GSH present, we can perform this important reaction here of 
reducing hydrogen peroxide into water. So taking the NAC supplements helps us increase the levels of GSH. It helps us regenerate GSH inside of our cells. And now when we begin to zoom in on the specific case of COVID-19 and the SARS-CoV-2 virus, what is happening here is that we already know that the spike proteins, which are these blue tulip looking things, are going to be binding onto the ACE2 receptor. ACE2 stands for angiotensin converting 2 enzyme. And so the issue with the coronavirus going after the ACE2 receptors on your cells is that when ACE2 is preoccupied, ACE2 is no longer going to be able to do its normal functioning, which is converting angiotensin. And so what is supposed to happen in normal cells is that you have angiotensin 2, which I'm abbreviating as AT2, is usually converted into angiotensin 1.7. And this is done by the ACE2 receptor. And so why this matters and why it's bad that COVID-19 is going after the ACE2 receptor is that when we inhibit this particular enzyme, this reaction can no longer occur. And the results of this inhibition are that when you have a buildup of angiotensin 2, it results in having more of these oxygen free radicals present. And in addition to that, it also causes your angiotensin 1.7 to not be able to break down the oxygen free radicals that it otherwise would be. So again, getting more and more levels of reactive oxygen species present. And then finally, the, the triple whammy here is that the ACE2 receptor or COVID-19, the SARS-CoV-2 virus is going to attract immune cells like neutrophils. And the neutrophils, when they are attacking cells to try to kill this virus, are also going to be secreting free radical species. So all of this results in a very high concentration of oxygen free radicals that go into your cells. So again, tying all this stuff together and why do we care about this is that the belief is that when we form tons of these reactive oxygen species present inside of our cells, this is what leads to cell death. The hope is that by reducing the levels, levels of the reactive oxygen species, we will be able to fight this disease. And so a paper which came out in Italy a few years ago was studying the effects of NAC on combating the respiratory diseases that were experienced in patients and so a study that involved more than 78% of patients who are older than 65 years old was conducted in which they did a randomized double-blind trial. And in this trial, they found that when people were exposed to these viruses who previously did not have any respiratory diseases, these people who were in the placebo group experienced 79% symptoms. And in the group that took NAC 600 milligrams twice daily, this group, only 25% of people had symptoms. And specifically, these were symptoms involving the H1N1 virus, the influenza virus. Now, I want to make a very strong note here. This doesn't mean that these people were not infected by it because the study shows that both groups of patients still were infected by the H1N1 virus. However, what NAC was able to do for these patients is that it was able to dramatically reduce more than one third as likely to show symptoms because of the NAC supplements. And that is the hypothesis here, is that taking the NAC supplement was able to greatly reduce the amount of symptoms experienced by patients in this group. A very good overview or a summary in one line that came from Dr. Schultz is the following. So exposure of us to the SARS-CoV-2 virus results in decreased levels or decreased activity of ACE2 on our cells is because it is an enzyme that is normally doing its job. When we have lower activity of this ACE2 enzyme, the result of this is that we're going to have a buildup of angiotensin 2, and we're also going to have a decrease in the levels of angiotensin 1.7. We're going to be increasing the amount of these oxygen free radicals inside of our cells, and having greater free radicals inside of our cells results in endothelial cell dysfunction. And so endothelial cell dysfunction is what could potentially be resulting in people getting the acute respiratory distress syndrome or ARDS, as well as the cytokine release storm or CRS. And so what the NAC supplement is doing here is that it is helping reduce the levels of these oxygen free radicals that are present inside of your cells to help prevent this 
endothelial cell dysfunction. A final note that I want to make also on this video is that the ways that we are able to fight higher levels of these free radicals inside of our cells is not just by relying on NAC, but other things such as taking your vitamins and exercising regularly. So our diet and exercise are extremely important. Other ways that we can help make sure that we keep our levels of these free radicals. So that's going to wrap things up for this video. I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you all for watching. Please stay safe, wash your hands, eat right, sleep well, and I'll talk to you next time.